Now, the Labour Party in Edo State is yet to decide if it will be heading to the courts to challenge the victory of Senator Monday Okpebolo of the All Progressives Congress in the just concluded governorship election held in Edo State. Mr. Okpebolo polled 291,667 votes to defeat Aswe Godalo of the People's Democratic Party, who scored 247,274 votes, while the Labour Party's Mr. Akbata came third with 22,700. 763 votes. Meanwhile, Kelly Ogbalo, chairman of the Labour Party in Edo, says the party candidate, Olumide Akpata, would have won the state governorship election if it was conducted in a free and fair manner. Well, joining us now to add his voice to that of the chairman of the Labour Party in Edo State, who says the Labour Party would have won the state governorship election if it was conducted in a free and fair manner, is Prince Yusuf Asama Kadiri, deputy governorship candidate of a Labour Party in Edo State. Good morning, sir, and welcome to the program. Good morning. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Good morning. Uh, I like the Kadiri here. Mr. Peter Obi has said what happened to the Labour Party in Edo State is state capture and not in any way a reflection of democratic principles. Mr. Alumide Akpata says what happened was a case of selling votes by the purchase of votes, the trading of votes uh, by the uh, highest bidders, willing seller, willing buyer, Scenario. And at times, in his view, he thinks that what has happened in Edo State is political halotry. Your party ended up getting 22,763 votes, not even one polling unit, no what, no local government area. What is your own impression, Be, having been a principal stakeholder in that election as the uh, running mate to Olumide Apata? Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Abati. Uh, my impression is very clear, just as has been said by Lumidi Akbata, my government candidate, and our national leader, Mr. Peter Obi. What happened on Saturday was a shared display of political electoral merchandise. It was transaction galore, a jamboree. A bazaar of, you know, commoditization and commercialization of votes, principally by the agents of both the ruling party at the federal government level and the ruling party at the state government level. It was it was as if they were bidding, and the the, 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 the electorate who found themselves very gullible uh, fell for it and lost their conscience, apparently, uh, perhaps due to the high degree of hunger and poverty in the land, and uh, they couldn't resist the amounts being offered. Where one party was offering 5,000, the other one was offering 10,000. And when the other one matched the other one, the ruling party at the federal level, most of their agents increased their offer to as much as 15, 20,000, and 30,000, and even to the point of buying over other parties' agents with amounts as much as 50,000 Naira to 100,000 Naira. It was all over the entire state. I witnessed this in my polling unit and a couple of other polling units that I went around to, 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 to see what was happening. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a shame. And uh, quite frankly, we couldn't have gotten involved because that's not in our character. Even if we couldn't have been able to match them, when you have uh, the ruling party at the federal government level, there are agents all over everywhere doling out mint, you know, bundles of 1,000 naira notes in mint, all over everywhere, and voters were running, began to run a task to them. And uh, the ruling party at the state government level, same thing, you know. So uh, it was quite disheartening. And it's so bad that in some polling units that I witnessed, some early voters that came out to vote much earlier, that voted for Labour Party, when they began to see the chair display of uh, the, the perfidy of uh, commercialization of the votes, 
they be, some began to complain that if they had known, they would have waited. They would not have rushed out to vote so early. They would have waited for the bazaar and get their own share and vote for the parties that were, you know, sharing the monies. Uh, it's a, for me, it's a travesty. Uh, this is not the type of democracy that we, we, we deserve. And uh, where the people, uh, unfortunately, have fallen victims of those politicians who have weaponized poverty and have, have commercialized and monetized politics. So that's where we find ourselves. Uh, you know, that's where we find ourselves. Okay. Uh, we ran the best campaigns. We went around the entire state. But, uh, and the, our message seemed to have resonated with the people. But unfortunately, the people could not resist the, 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 the peanuts, which uh, unfortunately they will eat for the next four years. And, uh, and as if they do not care about uh, the, the, the level of decadence, infrastructural decay, and uh, economic uh, uh, challenges that they are all going through. And, and, and I wonder, recently, we heard about the end bad governance protests. But unfortunately, it seems as if the people themselves do not know what is good for them. They would rather, you know, eat the peanuts today. Okay, let's, and, let's, and suffer for let's the rest talk of about the people. Let's, the let's talk years. about the electorate. Uh, of course, we saw voter apathy, be, uh, widespread voter apathy, with, of course, uh, voter turnout only registering at a meager 22%. However, having said that, in 2023, in the presidential election, Edo State registered as a Peter Obi state, if I may call it that. Why do you think this Peter Obi yeah. effect is not translating in off-cycle elections and in elections where he's not on the ballot? I remember when we interviewed uh, Mr. Olumide Akpata here, he said, well, the Peter Obi effect is very much alive and well, and it's at play in this election, and uh, it will play in his favor. Uh, so, yes, we can speak about those who came out to vote and, uh, and were uh, agreed you know, to be part of the, a transaction with regards to selling their votes. However, there's a large percentage who didn't come out to vote at all, uh, and we would have thought that the Labour Party would have appealed uh, to, to, to those people. What is going on with the uh, Peter Obi effect? Yes, I, I think in our campaigns, we did our best to appeal to the people, and we, we had huge followership, organic followership. Um, but I think to a large extent, uh, the people seem to be very despondent. Uh, and uh, the concern, even during our campaigns, that we always had, the questions we always asked is, are you sure our votes will count, even if we vote for you? And that mirrored the minds of the people that, okay, even if we vote for you, are you sure our votes will count? And they, they, they still reminiscent in their mind what happened in the national election last year, and of course, how the cases went you know, through the entire gamut of the election petition process and the, and the, and the eventual outcome. So uh, that, to a large extent, dampened the spirit of the people. And uh, we did our best during our campaigns uh, to, to educate the people, to assure them that votes will count. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, based on the assurances that we received from the electoral umpires and the law enforcement agencies, you know. Uh, so, well, it, uh, it's difficult for us to fathom what would have prevailed in the mind of those who chose to sit back at home. The level of voter party is also very worrisome. <clears throat> but I think it's still part of that concern that uh, even if we come out and vote, the votes will not count. Uh, to a large extent, that kept you know, recurring everywhere we went, day in, day out, uh, from, the, from the people on the streets. OK. Number one, did you buy votes? I've asked this question from other people, and I'm going to ask, did your party buy votes one way or the other? I mean, was there any form of inducement? I didn't expect anybody to tell that they induced one way or the other. So like I did ask uh, Mr. Schreiber yesterday. Secondly, is your party going to go to court? Do you believe in the legal process? Uh, thirdly, do you have evidence of all this other political party doing all this shenanigans? Are you going to also press the case in court? Fourthly, 
were you denied also the chance at the coalition center? Because a lot of people say the results were manipulated largely in the coalition center. Yeah. Um, first of all, you've asked so many questions, Rufai. So I'll, did you I'll, buy votes? Take them one after the other. Would you go to court? We did not, we did not buy votes. We, mm. we did not buy votes. We could not have bought votes, and we could not have gotten involved in that shenanigan. And uh, even if we had the resources, which we don't have, you can imagine where you are, you know, confronted with a situation where uh, agents of state power, uh, you know. Doling out these monies, I'm not sure, are from individual uh, 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 efforts, individual labor, but uh, from our commonwealth, you know, uh, on both sides, both APC and PDP. Uh, so uh, we could not be able, to, we couldn't have competed with them. And we told ourselves, have an issue that look, as a matter of principle, this is not something we can even get involved in uh, because we, our mission is very clear, our message is very clear to rescue the people from bondage. So we cannot get involved in that kind of uh, uh, bazaar. So we, we did not buy votes. We couldn't have bought votes. And even if we had the resources too, which I, we do not have, we could not have been able to match them, uh, it's not in our principle uh, to, to, to get involved in that kind of uh, shenanigan. So we did not buy votes. Secondly, um, are you going to go to court? The second question is whether we'll go to court. Yeah. Yeah, well, as of this moment, we are still gathering you know, reviewing everything, consulting within our party, uh, amongst ourselves, and uh, I, I, in no distant time, very soon, our decision, our position will be made clear to the public. Okay, another, the another, is still going on. Another yeah. question I ask is, do you have all the evidence of all that shenanigans that happened, you know, uh, all the evidence of how you say people manipulated the process, and what's your take on what happened at the coalition center? Because a lot of people said the results went awry uh, at the collision center. Yes, yes. That, that in itself was another, another level of the fraud that, that infested the, the electoral process. You see, huge numbers of security agencies were deployed to the ground. And that created a semblance, a guise of peaceful conduct of the elections. But in actual fact, uh, the, the vote buying and commoditization exercise was going on under the full glare and the watchful eyes of most of the security agencies. I, I, on, 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 on some occasions, I had to place calls to some, drew the attention to some when, I, when things were drawn to my attention or the ones I cited by myself. But they just looked the other way, as if uh, they didn't care or they were compromised or they, were, they had a standing instruction not to interfere with, the, especially areas where the, 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 the ruling party at the federal government level. Their agents were you know, openly and brazenly uh, paying for and um, bidding for, 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 for votes. And uh, um, I'm trying to remember your, your next question again. You, um, sorry, Rufai, can you- No, I'm just question? saying, uh, if you've answered what happened at the coalition center, I'm just saying, hope you people are collating all these facts. Do you have yes. facts that all these shenanigans happen? Do you have pictorial evidence of uh, vote buying and other things that are happening? We have, we have some pieces of evidence, but you know, it wasn't just in one location, it was across the entire state. And uh, it, was like a, it was like a thunderstorm. Uh, there are pieces of evidence. Now the collection center, that was where, uh, the, you know, for that magic was done, you know, where you uh, uh, mutilation and uh, tampering with results, you know, began to occur in a, in a clandestine manner. Uh, and we, we are victims because uh, there are some police units where we got uh, reports from our agents that uh, no matter how bad it was, some committed voters who still voted for us, but at the end of the day, when those things got to the coalition centers, especially at the local government coalition centers, that was where the main fraud was done. Okay, I like Before the results from the local government has got to the state coalition center. Alaji, let's make uh, so, progress. So the, 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 yes. I've seen a statement by uh, Sorry, uh, Ulumidi Akpata. I know you guys uh, ran the campaign on the basis of, oh, hashtag Edo with the OK. That's Ulumide and your good self. Yes. But OK, now we have this outcome. He says that he's on bout. He's unbeaten, he's uh, unbroken. That's the title of the statement that he signed. 
your guy, Ulumidi Apata. Okay, how do you feel personally? And, you know, as someone, I guess you are relatively new in this kind of, you know, high wire politics. Are there lessons that you have learned? Are there recommendations that you would like to make? Personal lessons, recommendations. Yes, thank you. Uh, firstly, how do I feel? I don't feel bad. I only feel pity for the people, quite frankly. And I sympathize with them. Because the people, have, the people seem to have chosen with the kind of macabre that happened on Saturday uh, to continue to embrace those who have, who have beholden them hostage and have, have, and have inflicted these pains and agony and trauma on them uh, that we witness in the country. The entire state is, is, is uh, replete with uh, you know, total breakdown, collapse of infrastructure, road infrastructure, uh, educational infrastructure, healthcare sector, everything has collapsed. Those under the responsibility of federal government and those under the responsibility of state government, they have all collapsed. So for us, these two dominant parties, APC and PDP, have taken the people for granted. They've held the people on stage, and they know, they understand that uh, the people are hungry, and drop a little thought for them, they will go crazy. Um, that is for me. And I, 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 same with Olumide Akwata, I'm unbroken, I'm unbent, and I remain resolved. Because for us, this is about nation building and recovering of our nation. Uh, we cannot run away from this country. This is the only home that I have. I still believe, yes, there's a lot of work to be done. It's, a, it's an accurate task. But uh, we remain resolute and committed to doing our best to rescue this our nation from those who have become, a, a, who are acting like hyenas and jackals. And, uh, and, and uh, day in, day out, raping and scavenging the ordinary citizens. We, do, we, we are still hopeful. It's a lot of work to be done. It's a lot of work to be done. Okay. It, it wasn't easy for Moses to move the Israelis out of uh, Egypt to, 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 the, to, the, to, the, to the promised land. A journey that would have taken 40 days, oh, two hundreds oh, of years. All right, well, so, speak, speaking of work that needs to be done, some people might argue that one of your biggest mistakes was not getting the zoning formula right. In hindsight, would you go back and change that and choose a candidate from the central to better your chances? No, I, I don't think that was the issue. Edo State is one. Edo State is one. You see, poverty and hunger does not know try. Uh, so it's, it's for us, it's not an issue of where the candidate comes from. It's about competence, capacity, and ability to, to, to provide and meet the needs of the people. Good governance. The, the good governance is not rocket okay science. The people have been deprived of good governance for too long, and they, 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 they more or less seem to think that uh, it is now the norm to live in this perilous, condition that, that, they, that they've been subjected to. It's really very sad. The past 25 years, uh, those state has nothing to show since 1999, since we returned to democracy. There's nothing to show on the ground that can meaningfully impact on the lives of the people. You know, these two dominant parties, APC and PDP, have run the affairs of the nation and the states, turn by turn. And they are tossing the people around like football, supporting it. Okay, real quickly, uh, you guys. But we can't. Give, we're not going to give up. Okay, real quickly, you guys claim that if the elections were were conducted in a free and fair environment, you would have won. And I keep hearing this assurance that oh, we can actually win this. Can you give us empirical proof? Because you guys did not even get a hundred thousand votes. You came a distant third. You got twenty-two thousand yeah. votes, you while see? others got over two ninety-one thousand votes and two for something thousand votes. So can you give me empirical proof? And you, I, I correct me if I'm wrong, you never won any polling unit. Even the candidate Olubi Akpata did not win his polling unit. I'm not sure you won yours either. So can you give me empirical proof to your path to win the election? Because I don't understand when you guys keep saying you won, you won, you won, you won. You didn't, you didn't do Rufai, well. Rufai, in a free and fair atmosphere, we would have won the election. That's not in doubt. That's an assumption. The people... It's unfortunate. That's an assumption. No, yes, you didn't show what We are the only political party that really. We, you didn't show We are the only it. ones that really campaigned. If 
see, if you were... We didn't just organize rallies. So, with your respect, if you were close, we, we went like the, the PDP, we, at least we'll say, oh, there was a path sorry. to winning it. Because you say you were going to go to court. When you go to court, what do you want to prove? As say, okay, obtain the result in my favor. Where are the numbers to show? I just want to empirical I have not said proof. that we are going to court here, Trufa. I said okay, if you go to we court. are still consulting internally as to whether to go to court or not. Yes. Uh, Rufai, you see, um, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's a horrible situation. Um, we, are really, we are the only ones that really campaigned in two sense. We went around the states. Every local government, two local government areas, 192 words. We spoke to the people. We were able to gauge the pulse of the people. And everywhere we went, we could see the level of disillusionment and uh, deprivation and the desire by the people for a change. Similarly, though, and uh, we were very, very confident. And because most of the people that we met, you know, were kind of organic, organic crowd, uh, unlike uh, those who organized uh, a kind of a jamboree kind of rally, only at city centers, we went to the remotest villages. We saw the condition the people are in, and the people expressed themselves. So that gave us the assurance and the hope. But you see, uh, what turned down on the election day, with, with money playing around, um, what do you do? Uh, some of the people who ordinarily um, had said, yes, we are voting Labour, and to today they said, oh, we desire to vote Labour, but we couldn't resist the money that was offered to us. Uh, what are you going to do about but, that? But, 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 but sir, I, I will blame that on us. Everybody, eh, if you ask the PDP man to, they will tell you they campaigned across the remotest area and people promised they were going to vote for them. I'm just saying, what's your proof that you could have won? Because you say, oh, if it's free and fair election, but you got 22,000 votes. So that's just an assumption. What was your path to winning? Because you are saying this under the context of no poll. Was it that bad that you could even win one polling unit despite all the shenanigans that happened? I mean, you, there was no path to pa winning. Our path to winning was. Our path to, there was a path to winning. But money bought okay. that part. Okay. The election money, has money, been, money raided that part. That's the all. The election has been won and lost. Let us imagine that Opewolo now yes. decides um, out of uh, you know magnanimity, whatever, whatever phrase we apply, to say, well, he wants to run a government of uh, you know statewide unity as governor of Edo State and invites you, for example. I say, you know, running me to Akwata to say, well, come, let us uh, join this government together. I want people from Labour Party. I want people from PDP. I want people from the other 17 political parties. And it makes an offer to you. You agree. Perhaps if the position is as uh, attractive as the Commissioner for Justice or Attorney General of the state. I'm waiting for your answer on that. But beyond that, what will you now say to the people of Edo State, because at the end of the day, this is all about them. What will you say to them? You, say, you, you said earlier that you sympathize with them, but what will you advise them? I sympathize with them. Uh, first of all, um, I didn't come into politics to seek for opportunities. We are here, we came in because we saw, we've, we've seen the situation that our people have been subjected to over the years, since, 2020, since the past 25 years, 1999. And we came in on a rescue mission. That's our commitment. To serve the people, to show to the world that good governance is not rocket science. I will not be part of any fraud or a product of a fraud. However, if that call comes, it's not, it won't be my personal decision to take because I am not, I'm not here for my personal aggrandizement. It will be the decision on our, of our party. But on my own personal principles, I will not be part of the product of a fraud, quite frankly. I'm so, eager to serve my people, but not through this kind of shenanigan arrangements. Then what do you say to the people of Edo State? Because uh, we're told that uh, the Edo people uh, have decided. To the people of Edo State, the people of Edo State, 
For those who chose to say they are voting, even though they are a microscopic minority, but majority chose to sit back at home and not come out to vote, well, they, get, they, 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 they will deserve what they get. And people of Edo State, behold your governor. And to the declared governor elect, behold your people. I sympathize with the people. In any way I can, I will continue to work assiduously to educate the people on the need for them to avoid the kind of situation that played out on Saturday, to educate the people on the need for them to have a conscience, to educate the people on the need for them to vote according to their conscience, to educate the people on the need for them to focus much more on competence and capacity, and to educate the people on the need to call those in authority to account for the trust reposed in them to pilot the affairs of the state and the nation. We are in a crisis situation. And, and our nation and the state needs total recalibration, total reconstruction, deconstruction and reconstruction, and total rebuilding, both of the society and the mindset of the people. Well, and I'm committed to continue to do that. OK, on that note. We'd like to thank you very much, Alaji Yusuf Kadiri, SAN, uh, Deputy Gubernatorial Candidate of the Labour Party, and they just concluded a uh, state uh, election. Thank you very much. <laughs>